Hello, everybody. Just going to make sure that we are good and live here on my other computer. Looks like we are. And yeah, so thank you so much for coming and joining me live today. If you are here or going to be hopping on soon, uh, this is part two of this Labrador in watercolor series. In part one, we painted the eyes. So if you need to go ahead and catch up on part one, um, you can follow along with us on the nose if you need to today. And you can revisit number one. I have it linked below here. You'll also find down below in the, de in the description is the printable outline. So you don't need to worry about sketching or you can trace the outline, whatever you need to do there. And there's also the reference photo for this uh, paint along series. So you can grab all of that down below. Also in the first uh, part, I the first video, I explained more about like the supplies and whatnot that you will need. So if you need to, you can grab um, the beginning of that video. We'll explain what I love to be using as far as brushes, paints, paper, all those good things. I have my collection of brushes right here. And today we are going to be focusing on this dog's nose. So in the reference photo, you'll see it has this beautiful reddish peachy undertone and then some of the nice dark colors down below here. And then we'll paint all the way down to where that mouth piece is there because we'll focus on the mouth for next week's um, mini series here. I am focusing on specific parts of the dog because I want to dive into more detailed studies. So that's what the point of these individual broken up pieces are for the live uh, videos. And then we'll probably paint kind of over into this area, but again, we'll just be focusing on the nose. And then next week we will work on the mouth. And then for the fourth and final part, we will paint the rest of the dogs like the ears and the body, and we'll pull it all together. So let's go ahead and start because we only have so much time. I am going to zoom in so you can really see that. Let's see if we can get our paints in here. It's always tricky to get everything in the shot, but I want you to be able to see the color mixing. Okay, let's do that. I think that's helpful. So with um, a brush, I'm using a size eight. It's just a little bit bigger. It's pointed round. It's I usually use pointed round brushes for nearly everything I paint just because they're such a versatile brush. I'm going to wet my brush and start getting some of my paints activated. We'll for sure be using this burnt sienna color that I have right here. I noticed I got a little bit of the white in that same well. I'm going to be careful not to try and touch that. Um, but yeah, so I have the burnt sienna also be using this Alzerian Crimson down here that I have. It's just a red, so if any red that you have. And then right here I have, it's called Cadmium Red, but really it's, it's like an orange. I'll grab a scrap piece of paper here just so you can see what I'm working with. So this is just an orange here. And that will be useful for I can see I already have a little orange dot there. Okay, so that will be useful for our color mixing those orange, reddish orange undertones. All right, let's go ahead and start mixing up. So I need to create more of a natural reddish orange. Um, so that'll be this orange color I have and mixing with a little bit of the red. And then I'm even going to pull in a little burnt sienna. So if you're looking at your reference photo, see how that really helps to make it more of a warmer, natural, orangey brown versus just straight orange out of the tube. I might even add a little bit more red to that. And dabbing my paper towel, that'll help get rid of some of that paint. I'm going to start in kind of some of these outer creases of the dog's nose. I feel like I have too much paint. Let's go ahead and lessen that and start smoothing that out. I just need to start to get this under base painted here. And it's nice and light. We can add in more layers. I'm just gonna pull that down so you can see it a little bit better. Being really careful to preserve the highlight of this dog's nose right up top here. Just kind of work around that. 
just gonna leave the light of the paper and then again I haven't picked up more paint I'm still smoothing out whatever I have on my brush and I'll pull it down here let's see I might just go through and lift a little bit of that So here's my quick base layer that I have, and it's leaving the little white highlight at top. I'll paint those nostrils more towards the second half because those are so dark, they'll go right over that paint anyways. So while this is still wet, let's grab some darker shades of what we just painted. So that's the red, that orange, a little bit of the brown or burnt sienna. And then let's add in a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. I just wanna make sure it's getting a little bit darker. And I don't have a ton of paint on my brush, but I'm just going to start to drop in some of that around this edge to start making it look a little more three-dimensional. There, and I still see some of these warmer tones underneath in the nose. This will also help to darken that lower half when we add more layers. So now I just got rid of that paint on my brush and I'm just going to continue to blot and just kind of smooth that around. We don't want such harsh lines. So just kind of, like I said, blotting or stippling is kind of a nice term to use it's really nice especially for the nose because the nose has so much great texture to it if you really zoom in on that reference photo photo you can see these little dots and just showing some of those will really help to make this dog's nose look more realistic so again you can even see some in the white area what I have for that part of the nose so far. It is time to darken this area and I'll go ahead and continue even while it's still wet. It's not super wet for my painting right now, it's just not fully dry. This way I'm able to let it blend, but also control where that paint's going when it's not like really heavily set with water. Right now I'm picking up the Payne's Gray and I'm just going to use that one straight as is because that will color mix on the paper really nicely. So right here where the nostril is, using that tip of my brush, I'll just start to run that along the edge of the nose. And again, on the left side here. And then I'll bring it down. I'm not going to paint too far into this part of it because again, we'll start to pull that paint that I have already painted down here into the nose. There's a really pretty, almost like an eyeliner, but it's for the nose that kind of goes right up top here. And then along this side a little bit too. And then that little line down the middle of the nose. So getting rid of some of that paint on my brush and blotting my paper towel. This is where we can start to fade what we just painted into the inside of the nose. And this really helps to blend it and transition it nicely instead of having harsher lines. This is a pretty stark paint color, so you don't need a lot. And we can always add in more. 
but I don't want to add too much right away. Maybe just show a little shadow around that nostril. And this one too, just to show the dimension. So I still haven't picked up more paint. I'm going to just smooth in on that side. This does look kind of funny at this point, only because they're, the nostrils are white and they should be dark. And once we paint those in, it's really going to help uh, set the tone for the darkest darks within the whole entire painting. We did get some of the darkest darks up here in the eyes already. So overall, looking at this dog, some of the darkest shapes are here in the eyes, the nostril, as well as this part of the mouth that we'll paint next week. And that's going to help give us our range. Okay, so let's let some of this area dry. Mine's pretty dry, but I'm just going to let it dry for a little bit longer before painting it. In the meantime, I'm going to mix up the yellow ochre and we're gonna work on the outer edge of this dog's snout. And I'm going to mix it with, I have a little bit of the burnt sienna here to help make that yellow ochre not quite so yellow. And even a little Van Dyke Brown So again, I don't have much paint on my brush right now. I just wanna show you this color that I have to work with. I think I'll even dab my paper towel and I just wanna start smoothing around this dog's nose as like that first base layer. And again, we will paint over right here with that nice bluish dark color. So smoothing this out, there's some really beautiful lights areas right here. We'll leave some of the white of the paper. Just pick up more water and start to blend some of that out. I know I mentioned this last time, but you want to paint in the direction of those hairs so you're almost sculpting the dog. So the snout is, you know, it's coming out towards the camera. It's severe shape, it's long. So we're painting in motions like this, if that helps to visualize. I'll just pick up some more of that color I mixed up here. Let's paint it on this side of the face. Keeping it somewhat light. And you'll notice on this part of the dog's nose, so it's overlapping the face on the side, it's nice and light. So we'll keep that white of the paper. And again, we'll add some other Payne's gray colors into the front of the snout here. I'm just kind of smoothing and blending some of those areas out. So let's go ahead and paint this part of it, the dog's nose. Let's grab the Payne's Gray. I don't need a whole lot of it. As you can tell, it's not as dark as the um, the nostrils. It is nice and dark right where the nose meets the fur. So just by simply adding this here, it'll help layer that part of it. And then using more of the side of our brush, that's going to help create more of a smooth, bigger stroke. I'm just going to get rid of some of that paint on my brush and now just push around that paint.
And some of these little hairs, dark hairs, even work its way up on this upper part of the dog's nose. Don't need much paint at all to be able to push some of that out. And then using little short strokes to create little hairs. We'll just continue to blend that into that yellow and white area that we just painted, including down below here. And I might have to pick up some more paint at this point. Let's grab some more. I think I would like to add into mine, at least, I am going to put a little bit of red into my Payne's Gray. I just see little hints of almost purple and red within the dog's front of the snout here. It's not a huge um, color that I see, but just something that's a little bit warmer. This helps to create a little more interest too, so it's not one flat color. Work our way down here. Again, just little flicks. Trying to keep as much nice light area there as we can. Okay. So we'll continue to add layers here, but for right now, let's a step back. So to help transition these hairs into the yellow, let's add a little bit more of a brownish gold color. And you'll definitely see a little bit of a uh, spot right above the nose that's almost, you know, a brown. So let's grab that Van Dyke brown any type of brown that you have, chocolatey brown color. And let's mix that with a little bit of the yellow ochre. We don't need a lot. Let's start by painting this little dark patch. I'm just gonna paint a few little strokes like this. And let's transition some of it down onto the side of the dog's nose. Not too worried if those strokes look too harsh because I can grab my brush and help transition it out with a little bit of water. Let's add some of that coloring down here. If you need to, just scrub on the side of your brush to get more of a flat um, angle. The whiskers create some nice little lines. I'll pick up more paint and or more water and dab that paint on my paper towel just to get rid of some of it. See a nice little layer here. And then working its way up. Again, just with a little water, run over those if you feel like you have too harsh of lines. Run right over that. I really want to, at the end, so on day four, We'll go back through and make sure that everything looks cohesive. So even if you're not real confident in some of these colors and layers, we can add that ridge line here in the dog's face, almost in the cheekbone. We can add that on day four when we're wrapping up the painting. So first base layers are looking good right here. Um, we've even been able to add a little bit of de detail, but right now I am actually gonna switch to my number three. 
It's a nice pointed round brush. It gets great detail. So if you need to switch to something smaller, I would recommend that right now because we will start to work on those nostrils. I'm grabbing Payne's Gray. And one of my favorite ways of creating black with watercolor without actually using black with in watercolor is Payne's Gray and mixing it with a lot of Van Dyke Brown. That'll give me my darkest, what I consider black. I'll show you over here. It's a nice, rich, dark color. Just this week, I actually released a video um, over on my YouTube channel here, and it is explaining my ways or my tips on how to capture black fur pets in watercolor, which um, color mixing, I don't actually use black. So I have a few other tips over there if you want to check out my latest video. So with quite a bit of paint on my brush, this is where I can start to get more detailed. Begin to fill in those nostrils to help it make more sense. There's a nice little highlight at the bottom of this nostril. So I'll just try and leave little flecks of white of the paper shining through. But if you accidentally painted over that, you can always use your bleed proof white at the end. And then let's fill in. So you can see there wasn't a whole lot of uh, difference in color mixing for these nostrils. It's pretty nice to be able to just fill in that shape. I'll go ahead and get rid of that paint on my brush. You can even work on lifting a little bit at the bottom here of the nostril. And then that one. It's very enlightening. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for that uh, comment on my video that I just posted on black. Um, yeah, black cats, black dogs. So I actually have a couple tutorials for you if you'd like to try. I have a couple, um, or I have a free one on a Bernadoodle that has black fur. And then I also have a couple that I taught. One I taught with Etcher is an art company and they offer um, classes by artists. So I have a black cat tutorial on there. And then I have on my Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course, which has 31 different dogs. One of them is a black lab, so another great um, color mixing uh, tutorial that'll walk you through how to paint a black lab. And then this whole month, I'm actually releasing new uh, pet portrait tutorials um, and tips on my YouTube channel for this entire month of June. And I'm excited about that. So I have another one coming out next week, as well as part three for this tutorial of this yellow lab. So at this point, what I'm doing as I'm talking, um, I am just taking those dark colors, same dark colors, and I'm just starting to now add in the details. And I see some really fun little details that kind of come out of the nostril. And painting in the direction of how they come out will be really important to show, again, the like the shape of the of the nose and that's really what helps to create that dimension and we can even add in little tiny lines and speckles this is a great reference photo because you can see so much detail makes a huge difference with the outcome of a painting is your reference photo so just adding a little few dark spots here you can add some here. I don't want to add them all over the place, just enough to kind of show some texture. And then we can go back through and soften them. I haven't picked up any more paint in a long time. Just using what I have on my brush. It's such a dark color that I don't need a whole lot. Let me pull this up close here. I'm 
going to start working on uh, detail right below, still on the nose, but right below the peachy part of the nose. So more of the hairs and the fur. Picked up that same color. This is where we'll start to show hairs. Just paint little tiny lines. Some bigger or thicker, some thinner. And then we'll take our brush and run over it just to help soften and kind of make this whole area darker. All right, I ran out of paint, pick up some more. Go away this way. Now painting this direction from the nose since the there's a little part in the hair down the middle here. I also want to um, share that starting July 1st, um, I am bringing back what I call the Dog a Day Challenge. And what that is, is a challenge that I did for myself now two years ago. And that is how the course, Master, Water, Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course came to be. Um, I'm just grabbing some water and helping to soften this out. I just run right over those details. Um, but yeah, so back to the challenge. So what I did was paint one dog a day for the entire month of July a couple years ago. And that um, now has become the course. And what I like to do is run that same challenge for um, you guys every year. So um, if you are a paid course member of Master Watercolor Dog Breeds and you are looking to uh, not only finish the course, um, it's a great way to do that, but it's also a great way to build your portfolio. So let's say that you're wanting to start getting some commissions for custom pet portraits. It's a great way to build your portfolio because it'll help you paint a whole variety of dog breeds, 31 different dogs, and you can start posting those on your Etsy shop as examples, your Instagram account to start drawing attention and um, curate your portfolio, which is super important when it comes to launching a pet portrait business. Or if you're just looking to get a hobby, um, a new hobby, or you love watercolor and love dogs, it's the perfect uh, place to just enjoy and relax and walk through a whole bunch of fun dogs. So again, I will be running a special promo on the course um, in a couple weeks for the kickoff to the Dog a Day Challenge. So stay tuned for that. Just want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, especially since you're here um, painting along with the series. I think you'll really enjoy it. Each of the paintings are about an hour or so, give or take, you know, a few minutes. Um, they'll take about an hour a day. I'm just using really light amount of the Payne's Gray to help soften where the whiskers go and help build up those layers. And down below here. Need to add a really faint amount of that same texture over here. Oops. Very little amount on my brush, just helping to shade. So a lot of these areas are still looking kind of flat. And again, I just want to remind you to not panic because at the very end on day four, we're going to go back through and add more dimension. All right, I'm getting nice and close to finishing, but I would like to add just a little bit more browns and warm up some natural colors inside the nose. So what I'll do is grab the Van Dyke Brown and mix it with the burnt sienna color here. I have enough reds and oranges, it appears. I just need to warm it up with some browns. 
So now I have some brown on my brush. I see a nice dark spot there. And one that helps shape this part of the nose here. One over here. So help soften some of those really dark details that we painted in. Some over here. I don't have much left on my brush. I'm just adding some more up top. Maybe I need a little bit more here. Another really um, key thing to painting portraits of any kind, really any painting, is to always make sure you're taking a step back from your painting. Maybe even leave it for a couple hours, a day or so, and come back to it because you're going to see a whole lot of things that you wish you would have um, added. So it's good to take a break, which is kind of fun to do this four-part series on four different days. Still just working with the browns. I think I'll go through and just add a little bit more shapes to the face just to help define where the snout is. So the yellow ochre and the Van Dyke brown. Just a little amount of it on this side of the face. Oh, not enough. On this side of the face, I'm adding in a little shape. It'll go right to the side there. And that helps to define the nose. I'll bring it up right there. It's going to help define that area a little bit more. Let's add a little bit here. I can see needs to be a little bit darker. And then smoothing that part of the nose out. And then adding a little bit more to my palette of that same color mixture. And then I want to to find this little piece right here. It actually leads right into the crease down here around the mouth. I think I'll just go ahead and start defining that with the browns and yellow ochre and then the burnt sienna. So just a nice dark color just so we can see that piece right there oh let's see how was it you came into doing pet portraits it's a great question so i actually have um i have loved painting well i should say drawing so i grew up drawing more than i ever did painting and you're gonna think i'm crazy but as a little girl i created my own dog encyclopedia. <laughs> so I have loved dogs since day one, ever since I can remember. And then um, I took a break from it. I went to school for graphic design and then I got back into um, painting and started painting with watercolor. And you know, somebody just asked me, I had not offered painting pets. Somebody had just said, hey, would you be able to paint my dog. And I thought, well, of course, that sounds like the best fit for me. Then I started from there offering them. And ever since I've offered pet portraits. So I have definitely come a long way when it comes to painting pets. Um, 
my, the beginning of my journey was not, um, as like anybody, you know, it's like practicing anything. You get so much better as you practice more and more. So I want to encourage you to, if you're feeling in that boat, um, and you're more towards the beginning of your journey, keep going because you are going to learn so much. You're going to find different unique patterns and your process will change and yeah, you'll just continue to, um, develop your skills. All right, so last but not least, there are some white areas, so bleed proof white. I'm actually not going to, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and paint that really dark spot. It's gonna look a little funny, but that way we can paint the really bright white highlights that go over top of it. So with the Payne's Gray mixed with the Van Dyke Brown here, that's my nice dark color. I just want to paint the shape. So it comes almost to the edge here. And then we'll leave the tongue for next time. But for right now, let's just go and paint that really dark shadowed shape. And we can bring that dark color right along the lip line. As well as over here. The reason why I won't paint the bleed proof white until I get the underlayer on, it's an opaque paint, so it'll overlay really dark areas. And you don't want to add darker layers usually on top of that white. It just really doesn't do anything for the painting. It kind of makes it look a little funny if you mix that white in with any watercolor paints. So I just want to get some of those areas in here without going too far into the mouth. So let's just do something like that. That way I can pick up where I leave off um, next time. Okay. We have to wait for that part to dry before we can add our bleed proof white. Let's add some of those really dark Hairs, I have my triple zero, which is like my tiniest brush that I own, super detailed. Just taking some of those and adding a few more of those dark details. Oops, if you're like me, just made an oops. I'll just grab my brush. You gotta get to your oopses as fast as you possibly can. Just add some paint over that, or some water, and then we'll just lift it with a clean spot on my paper towel. And it's no biggie because we will go back through and add more layers to that part of the painting. So luckily, no harm done. How to have patience. Let's do some bleed proof white. If you don't have it, don't worry. But I will say it makes a huge difference as far as detailed work in a painting. All I do is I just grab a little bit, starting to kind of dry out, but you can add, spray some water, drop some water in there. I haven't done that, but I just grab a little bit out of my palette at a time. So it's actually thick. Right now it's getting a little drier this paint is. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of water to help thin it out. All right, so I have just the tiniest bit of water. You kind of want to make it like a real runny glue, Elmer's glue consistency. You don't want to make it too watery because then it won't stand out against those dark colors. Okay, so here I have my tiny little brush. One of my favorite parts, we aren't going to be painting those full whiskers. We are going to leave those until the very, very end. Always the end of the painting, I paint those whiskers. And let's just start to paint just a few fun little detailed hairs. If you ever get too much, you just kind of blot it with your finger. We don't want to paint a ton of these. 
Just enough to show a little texture. See some that kind of creep out from the edge of the nose there. This is also great if you need to bring in just a little bit of a highlight underneath the nostril. Or you need to add some speckles of highlights in the nose. Just paint little dots. There's a little happy medium here as far as you don't want to overdo the white. It can become distracting at times. Just add a few more. Kind of in between. Here. Okay, so one of my favorite to show 3D dimension is through overlaying. So as the mouth overlays this nice dark shape, we can paint some of those tiny little hairs just so it's not a real sharp edge. There's some down here that are a little bit longer, so that's always kind of fun to show. Okay. Here we are, we can add more at the very end, but once the painting is all finished, but at this point right now, it's important to um, not overdo it. All right. So that is it for today's part two of this Yellow Lab portrait series and painting the nose. Again, if you need to catch up, now you can watch one and two, and then next week we will jump back into the mouth area and it's going to start to really come together. Hope you guys are having fun with this series. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to run more series like this if you think it's helpful to break up a painting instead of doing it in one full sitting. Um, I just thought that would be a fun idea and focus on specific areas because that's how you can kind of see um, detail and not overwork a painting um, overall. So anyways, thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate you all being here and I will see you next week.